Hello everyone, T Davy here with some more For the King Breakdown series. In this episode, we are going to be deep diving into focus points, how to get them, what they're used for, and the maths behind them, plus a little bit more. So why not stick around for that? If you are new to the series and this is the first episode you're watching, I recommend you go back one episode, watch the first one, because I will be glazing over a couple of the things I spoke about in the introduction episode. So I want to make sure you're all caught up before we get on with it. Firstly, let's cover the basics of focus points. Let's answer some of the simple questions. And later on, we'll move into the nitty and gritty of the maths behind them as well. So let's get on with it. So what are focus points? Focus points are these yellow hexes above your character. Every character, apart from two, starts with three focus points. The scholar starts with four and the hobo starts with two. The scholar also has a special ability called refocus, which means at the end of their turn in the overworld, or at the end of a battle turn in a dungeon crawl, they will regain one focus point for free. So if your scholar is full on focus during overworld explorations, you're not going to land anywhere like enter a, a dungeon, you should always use one focus point to gain one hex worth of extra movement. By doing that, 20 times a run, let's say you could net yourself four to five turns worth of extra movement for free, which is really, really helpful in a long run. You can also find this perk on the Brass Bell, on the Focusing Cap and the Mystic Hat as well. So keep an eye out for those items. So how do you get more focus slots and why are they so important? Well, you can add focus points by unlocking them via certain vendors, sanctums, items and other little things in and around the map. A character with lots and lots of focus points can control the flow of the battle as you can force perfect rolls on any action, making the battle that wasn't going to be easy very easily indeed because you've just switched the flow of the game and taken control. So where can I use focus? Well you can use focus on a lot of things in For the Kin. You can use it on extra movement in the overworld, on overworld challenges, weapon attacks, fleeing, ambushing, sneaking, disarming traps, unlocking treasures and more. But the question is can you just use focus to win everything? Can you make everything Perfect. No, you cannot. There are some actions in the overworld and there are some weapons that have this symbol. This symbol simply means you cannot use focus on this activity. There are also a couple of activities that require the luck stat. The luck stat is a stat that you cannot use focus on. So some parts of this game are left to RNG. What if I run out of focus points? Well, if you run out of focus points, all you have to do is either stay at an inn or a camp. That will typically net you two focus points back. Meditate at either a camp or an inn. That will net you full focus points all the way back. Consuming a golden root will recover you three to five focus points, depending on your bone pipe. Leveling a character up, devoting to a monument, devoting to a sanctum are all ways you can also recover focus points. And we have also touched on the perk regain already, so we don't have to cover that. That will also gain you focus points. Okay, just wanted to interrupt the video for 15 seconds to ask you to consider liking, subscribing, and if you have any extra tips that I have not going to cover in this video, please drop them in the comment section below. Thank you, let's get back to the talk. Okay, with that all out of the way and all of the basics covered, let's start deep diving into some of the maths behind focus points. This might get a little bit confusing for you, so I'm going to try and go as slow as I can. Can. In this first example, you can see my scholar Vila and she is about to cast a spell called Time Jump. Spells in this game require a perfect roll to work, otherwise they will fizzle and no effect will happen. You have just wasted a turn effectively. Vila has a maxed out intellect stat of 95. We spoke about stats in the first episode, link in the description to see that one. As we can see, she has a 90% chance of a successful roll per slot, giving her a 73% chance of a perfect roll, which will then cast the spell. By dropping one focus point into the first slot, you can now see that that first slot is now golden, meaning that is locked in to be successful, that will never fail. You can also see that this percentage chance of the other two slot rolls are now 100%. This is because the first focus point that you use increases the subsequent rolls by 10% but it doesn't even stop there. The second focus point you use ups that to 15%, third one to 17% and the fourth one to 19%. So as you can see from that with more and more focus points that you use you do get a diminishing return but if you have an activity that requires 
five slots. You have five slot activity and let's say you have a 60% chance per slot. If you then go and use four focus points, locking in four of those slots to be 100% golden and perfect, you have then increased the final slot up to a 79% chance, which is a lot higher but it's not perfect and it could be seen as a little bit of a waste of your focus or a bonus depending on the situation that you're in. That is something that you're going to have to try and work out in the moment and that is why this game is so much fun but also quite tricky. So just in case you didn't quite grasp that, we're going to do one more example. In this example, I'm going to be using my trapper called Seymour. He has an 85% awareness stat that is linked to his bow, giving him an 85% chance of success per slot. Attacks with a non-perfect roll have a chance percentage equal to the stat. Attacks and spells that have a perfection ability on their hands, or an ability or a, a, you know, a special effect, are always going to have a lower percentage versus their stat. So that's something to keep in mind. Hopefully the visuals on the screen are helping you understand that. It's a little bit confusing, but let's get back to the example. So we have 85% chance of success on a free slot roll, and I decide to drop two focus points in, meaning we have two golden slots locked in at the 100%, and the final slot, you can also see, is 100%, giving us max damage. As you can see, by well, the first one would have added 10%, the second one would have then added that extra 5% to get it up to 100 But the question is, was the second point required? Was the second focus point really needed? It only increased our chance by 5% and was it worth it? That is, you know, something you really have to think about in these games. Every now and then, using that focus point is worth it. Every now and then, that focus point is not. Depending if you can get the kill or not. If you can get the kill or not and guarantee that kill, you might want to go for it. If you can't, you might want to hold back on the focus points and save them for another time. So that is that for focus points. I hope I haven't confused you too much. If I have, drop a comment in the section below. Slide into the DMs or the Instagram or the Twitters. I have a cute doggo on Instagram. If you want to go see that, check it out. Give me a follow there. Soon I'll be back with some more for the king. And in that time, we'll be covering skills. Until then, peace out.